The next item, commissioners, is number 10, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Brooklyn. It's for 10 J Street in the Dumbo Historic District, docket number 16-5902, block 1, lot 50. And it's, um, it was last heard at the public hearing of February 3rd, uh, 2015. Um, this is an application for a certificate of appropriateness, an altered American round art style factory building designed by George M. Newhall Engineering Company and built in 1897 to 98. The application is to alter the north elevation, demolish rooftop bulkheads, construct rooftop additions, alter ground floor openings, install storefront infill, and modify loading docks and stairs. Commissioners, good afternoon. Jerry Nelson, the preservation staff. So this is an application you may remember from uh, early in February of this year. It's an application to remove. Uh, this building has been modified over the years. It, uh, a portion of it has been demolished. And at some point in the 20th century, a uh, modern wall was, instru was installed. The proposal is to demolish that wall, that north elevation, and to reconstruct the facade. Uh, commissioners had specific comments about the design, uh, specifically comments about the, the glassy it's, it's configuration, the, the, the amount of glazing. The applicants have revised their proposal and they are here today. And Bill McKins will start um, with a, just a reminder of context and we'll go from there. Will be open the hearing. Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, Bill Higgins of Higgins Place Bar. Um, I will try to be brief, but I wanted to give you uh, a summary of some of the historical background uh, and some of the design and appropriateness thinking that has gone into uh, the development of this proposal and then subsequently into the revisions based on, on, on your comments. Um, so uh, the building is here in Dumbo. Uh, and the uh, facade we're talking about is this one, uh, which uh, faces the river. Uh, a little bit of, of quick history. The building was built in 1897. It is the other, or another, sugar refinery in Dumbo. Um, this is for the Arbuckle brothers, who were competitors of the, um, of the Havemeyers and, and Domino. The building was built in 1897, um, and the major point in its history uh, is that in the 1940s, this portion of the building facing the river was uh, demolished. So we have a building that has had this major thing happen to it. And our idea is, let's see if we can make appropriate design um, that is both sympathetic to the history of the building, contemporary in itself, and reflects um, what happened to the building in the course of its history. These are tax photo, uh, tax photo and a 1930 transit photo showing what the building looked like before uh, the changes were made. This is approximately the portion uh, that was demolished. Um, it is a brick building. It had multi-pane windows. It had these unusual chute-like elements which um, provided a certain angularity uh, to the facade. And uh, at the loading dock and openings at the base of the building, uh, there were uh, miscellaneous uh, uh, infills. Um, so here is the original structure. This is where the river is. Here is uh, half of the building uh, coming away and being demolished in the 1940s, exposing structure. And here is the new uh, 1940s and subsequent facade going going on. So this is a, a, the, the building from the river. This is that post-1940s facade at the time that uh, the building was cut away. This port, the other portions of the building were also stuccoed. The stucco, however, was applied over uh, metal mesh, and so uh, not directly to the brick, so it comes off. Um, and that fits into uh, the proposal that you're, you're going to see today. Um, the building has a great miscellany of windows and infill and openings that have been changed and closed and reopened. Um, and uh, what this really is, at least to us, is not architecture and not historic. 
Um, you can see in uh, some of the physical evidence, this is, uh, this is uh, probes made to that wall, and it's, uh, what, maybe you can see it better in this drawing. What happened was that, that these were columns, for the most part, we think freestanding interior columns. Uh, when the remainder of the building was demolished, uh, this became an exterior wall. And what they did was at that subsequent date, they bolted on these shelf angles uh, to the columns so that they could carry uh, the new brick exterior wall. So the exterior brick was carried on the, uh, on the uh, original uh, beams that remained and then carried on these shelf angles um, so the facade could be um, created in, in this end of the building um, buttoned up. Um, in thinking about what to do about this facade, um, our first thinking was this really deserves to be a, um, a contemporary treatment, a one that is modern. And there's a history, um, a recent history with commission regulation uh, of a modern language being used. This is a new building at 205 Water Street. Um, here, modern edition 25 Washington, Plymouth Street, Pearl Street. So modern architecture is not something that um, uh, is, doesn't have a place in this district. It very much does and has been determined to be uh, an appropriate uh, uh, approach. So some of the other things on our minds when we thought about this facade were the uh, industrial language, uh, not only in recent buildings, there's that 205 Water Street, which the commission approved only a few years ago, um, but also in the building itself. And we thought this was important because the uh, interior structure of the building was exposed at the time that, uh, that this um, demolition was done. So this industrial language of, of, of steel and metal members, um, the language of the three-dimensional quality that the facade had before with this um, sort of faceted angular quality with these elements that projected from the facade. And really just in general, we try to think almost metaphorically as well as literally here, what happens when something uh, is cut or fractured? Sometimes it's jagged. Uh, sugar crystals, it was a sugar refinery. The steel and brick materials, both original, historic, and, and recent. Bridges, a secondary theme, but this is seen, as are many of the buildings in Dumbo, in juxtaposition with the, the steel and other historic materials um, in the Brooklyn and Manhattan bridges, and just the water itself, that sense of reflection and, uh, and motion. Somehow we felt, um, this could be part of the approach that we would take. And we felt that the basic approach we wanted to take was where the old facades survived, these three uh, sides of the building, and we were able to remove <coughs> the stucco, we would do something that was expose the original brick, did new windows that were in the character of the historic uh, windows, did new infill at the base that was in the character and the basic language of the industrial infill that was there before, um, so that we would have the surviving historic portions of the building would read that way. And it would provide us with a kind of nice foil for a modern uh, treatment that would occur here. Um, and I'm going to finish with, with this one. This is, this is the, the state the design was in when the commission last saw it. You can get a sense of that more restorative approach here and on the other facades, and the approach of glass and steel and this sort of um, faceted, angular quality that, it, that, that, that is, is in the, the design. Our interpretation of what the commissioner said, and I think I'm correct on this, is that you were very much in favor of taking a modern approach here. Um, you, you wanted a little more discussion of, of modern uh, buildings and interventions found appropriate in the district, and I think we just um, provided that. You also felt that we should make some refinements to the design that without taking away its basic modern quality, um, united it more, wove it together more um, with the uh, historic facades, not only in terms possibly of using more brick, but also in terms of having a perhaps higher 
uh, ratio of solid to void. Um, and we took all of those uh, uh, comments into consideration. And Iran Chen is going to show you the refinements that are based on those. Thank you, Bill. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm pleased to be here again. Um, we've actually uh, quite enjoyed the conversation that we had uh, last presentation, and we uh, strongly feel that the elements that were, uh, the inputs that we've received have improved our design, and we're excited about that. That's not an obvious thing to say. As Bill was said, there's three elements that I feel we agreed upon. We have a new wall that we need to design. Uh, the, the, the contemporary nature of it is fine, and the fact that architecture can tell a story about a history or a sequence of events. Um, however, uh, this is the new proposal uh, of the building, and I just want to compare the two here. And I want to take you through the, the, the four elements that we've added and changed in the design. The first one is we've created a framework of brick around the new uh, added facade, and we've done it by thickening the edges of the brick on the two sides of the building. We've made them two foot five uh, wide, which is basically the, the dimension of the original corner uh, of the building, excuse me. And then with the penthouse, we've added a frame, basically the cornice uh, and the, uh, the rail above the rooftop. Uh, from brick as well, where the piers that used to be steel are now brick as well. So it, it creates a framework of brick around uh, the facade itself. The second thing we've done is we went back and we said, what can we bring from this idea of breaking of the slabs into the facade in a more pronounced way? And the, um, and the slabs are made of, uh, of, of brick and terracotta. And we said, can we take and allude to the idea of broken slab and incorporate it into that facade. And what we've done is created an horizontal line that basically matches the rest of uh, the order of the building, uh, which is 18 inch thick, four courses of brick, and incorporated that within uh, the window, the curtain wall, if you will, infilling in between um, with a spander of glass. So we've created a thick line um, that um, represents the horizontal and brings the brick element outside. The next thing we've done is we took all of those steel elements that we had before, and I spoke about it last time, the idea of bringing the broken steel, which is the structure of the building, out to the facade sort of poetically, and play with the idea of organic uh, nature of the park that is in front, and we made them thicker, so they're much more substantial um, in relationship to what we had before. And the last thing is we added those solid steel panels into the composition. By doing that, two things, reducing the amount of transparency, increasing the amount of opacity, and bringing more, uh, if you will, masculine language, uh, and less fragile, and, and I remember that comment, um, to the facade as a composition. Altogether, if you look at the detail, is really a, a, a wonderful, I feel, composition of those three materials, the brick, it feels right here that connects to the original building, the steel elements that come from the ground and sort of find their way to the top, uh, and the, um, the steel mollies, and then the glass. This is in comparison in detail between what we had before and what we have now, and that's where I really feel we've made a step uh, forward, uh, not only in a better design, but in, in something that perhaps uh, has a greater appropriateness to uh, to the neighborhood. Just to summarize, I um, you know these are the elements that we, that we've done. I, I strongly feel that this is a design that is meant for that building. We didn't take it from a different place. We didn't copy it. You can't see it anywhere else. This is a tailored, uh, personal design uh, that reflects an historical event of this particular story in this particular neighborhood. And therefore, I really hope uh, that you like our changes. Thank you. Um, any questions for, for the applicant? All right, uh, Fred? Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, um, let me just step back for a minute and say that what's happening in Dumbo, it, to me, is hugely exciting um, for landmark preservation as well as uh, for architecture in general in our city. 
And it's not so dissimilar in a way to what um, the meatpacking district um, has uh, allowed to uh, happen. In other words, uh, um, again, because of the nature of the district, and each is different, but there's a similarity in industrial past, which allows um, uh, perhaps a, a different level of freedom, if you will, uh, when compared to a, uh, a brownstone, uh, essentially brownstone neighborhood, as an example. Um, so I was in great praise of this um, the last time around. I thought it was incredibly uh, ingenious and smart in the way that the, the new design took um, a piece of, um, of history for this building, this, this cataclysmic history of, of, uh, of uh, taking half the building away, uh, exposing uh, you know, to, to this incredible view and, and river um, and view from the other side of the river to that wall, uh, exposing something that um, to me then needed to be uh, finished. And uh, to me, um, this is a fantastic 20th, 21st century finishing of something that started in the 19th century. And um, I think it uses uh, uh, materials and technologies that we, um, that we have at our disposal today. Uh, and, and, but it, it, as the uh, architect has said, this is derived from elements that are left on this building and, and elements that are, um, th that are inspired from this building, not uh, some generic idea about a, a curtain wall. So I'm really, um, I don't know what other commissioners are gonna say. I know that everybody didn't like it before, uh, although some did. Um, I, to me, it's, th it's, thrilling, it's thrilling, and it, frankly, it's one of the most thrilling um, 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 applications I've had the privilege to sit in on uh, in my six and a half years on the commission. So I, I think it's thoroughly appropriate, and I'm really thrilled to see it today. Uh, thank you, Fred. Uh, Michael, I know that, yes. I didn't like it before because I thought it was too delicate. And to me, you've taken a little mint julep, thrown a shot of whiskey in it, and made it perfect. This is absolutely perfect to me. All right, uh, other comments? Um, I, I, last time, uh, like for, uh, Fred, I was very supportive of its uh, previous iteration. I think that, um, uh, and I, I was inspired by the narrative uh, that was given to us. I think uh, this building is unique, and I think it is unique to this, this location. I don't think it reads, um, and definitely doesn't have the architecture philosophy behind it, which is generic and that you'll find in different cities elsewhere. Uh, so I think that that helps me appreciate uh, this design all the more and feel it's, it's, it is appropriate. Uh, and uh, again, I think, uh, like many of my commissioners here, feel that in historic districts, it's good to have creative, great creativity and uh, modern interpretations, and we've often and uh, largely supported that. Um, and uh, so, but we do need to make the findings of appropriateness, and we draw from the historic district uh, and its character in order for us to be able to make that finding. Uh, so I do appreciate uh, the thoughtfulness of this design, uh, drawing so much from uh, the history of this building itself, as well as uh, the overall district and uh, its intent. Uh, I think that the suggestions um, that were made by the commission last time have, in fact, uh, I was a little skeptical, and I think I said that, uh, you know, I don't, I know we're giving these suggestions. I was concerned that it would take away from what I thought was a very beautiful building. Um, but I think that uh, those changes, uh, I think even, improve the story of this building in, 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 a, in a very respectful manner. So, and it retains the, the design integrity, but I think it also builds upon the history of this neighborhood. Um, other comments? Yes, uh, um, John? Um, I, I realize what we um, sent them back to do, and I, I think that I can't disagree that it's ingenious and smart. 
Um, but I was the person at the beginning who uh, yes. uh, disagreed from a point of view of the prominence of the structure and, and its whether it actually distracts from, beautiful or not, uh, whether it distracts from the, the special architectural and historic character of the district. Um, I, I still feel that it distracts, so I, I won't be a supporter. It doesn't mean I don't appreciate the beauty of it, but um, I think I may not be as ingenious or smart. So. Okay. Uh, any, any other comments? All right. Uh, so then I think we can move to decision. Uh, Chris? Did you close the hearing? Oh, yeah, sorry. Let me close the hearing. In the matter of 10 J Street, application is to alter the north elevation, demolish rooftop bulkheads, construct rooftop additions, alter ground floor openings, install storefront infill, and modify loading docks and stairs. Noting that the building's style, scale, and materials and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Dumbo Historic District, further noting that the northern portion of the building facing the East River was demolished in the mid 20th century prior to designation I move for approval, finding that the northern wall facing the river featuring irregular spaced paired double hung metal windows and a concrete parged exterior is badly deteriorated is not original to the building and does not relate to the building's other three facades in terms of materials or fenestration pattern and therefore the removal of this facade will not result in the loss of historic fabric or diminish the building's special architectural character. <clears throat> that the use of alternating vertically and horizontally divided areas of glazing and non-structural steel framed by structural steel and masonry suggests the exposed wall of the building when it was partially demolished and heavily altered in the mid 20th century, that the modular organization of the new north facade, the expression of the structural system, and the consistent width of the vertical bays is derived from the bay modules of the building's existing historic facades at J, Pearl, and John Streets, that the alternating diagonal divisions and planner changes at the proposed north facade and the use of glass, metal, and masonry alludes to the building's history as a sugar refinery in an abstract way by recalling the crystalline character of sugar while also relating well to horizontal elements found at the Manhattan Bridge located adjacent to the property that the use of masonry at the setback top floor of the north elevation will match the historic masonry present at the building and will relate well with the southwest and west elevations, that the building historically featured rooftop accretions, including bulkheads and water towers, visible from public thoroughfares. Therefore, the presence of rooftop structures will be in keeping with the character of the building, that the simple design and details and dark colored finish of the proposed bulkheads will be in keeping with the utilitarian character of the existing rooftop structures at the building and adjacent buildings thereby helping to integrate these structures into the existing roofscape without drawing attention away from the significant features of the building and streetscapes, that the rooftop bulkheads will be minimally visible from a limited vantage point, only from John Street, that the proposed eight over eight double hung metal windows at the Pearl, John and J Street's facades will be installed within existing and restored masonry <laughs> openings and that the configuration and operation of the window will recall the building's historic fenestration, that the installation of storefront infill at Pearl, John, and J Streets will utilize existing ground floor openings, that the configuration, materials, and details of the proposed ground floor storefront infill, which includes metal multi-light windows and doors and paneled metal paired doors, will recall ground floor infill historically found at the building, will create a variety of infill at the street level characteristic of loading bays historically within the district and will relate well to the multi-light metal windows at the upper floors. That the relocated stair and switchback ramp at the J Street elevation will replicate the existing concrete base and metal pipe railing and will be in keeping with ramps, stairs, and loading docks found within the district. That the proposed metal canopy spanning two bays at the John Street entrance 
will relate to canopies found throughout the district, that the proposed signage at the first floors consisting of metal letters mounted at infill above retail entrances will be well scaled to the facades and will not overwhelm the storefronts or detract from the building, and that the simply designed wall-mounted metal light fixtures are existent with utilitarian light fixtures historically found at the base of the building. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Is that I think that's it. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. This application is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, commissioners, the next item is item.